a lot of Robin's ballets have to do with community. He was very interested in us dancing for each other, not just solely for the audience. Dances at a Gathering is about observation. You have to be in tune with the dancers around you, the music, the space. It's community, it's love, it's interaction, it's relationship. It feels very human. Dances at a Gathering is a ballet choreographed by Jerome Robbins to 18 pieces of piano music composed by Chopin. You go through so many emotions and so many ranges of music. There's mazurka, scherzos, waltzes, etudes, nocturnes. They each tell a different story, but they also intertwine so beautifully, and it's all just a flow of dancing. Jerry had written a few notes down in exploring a title for the ballet. There was Les Amants, Dances for Love, Chopin Love, and my favorite of them all, Savol, which is Love's Written Backwards. It shows that this ballet was really intended to represent just that, love. And of course, we all know that love comes in so many different shapes. It comes in romantic forms. It comes in friendly forms. It comes in angry forms. So there's all kinds of different representations of love in this ballet. I think the most challenging part of my role, the apricot girl, is the giggle. The giggle is a really fun pas de deux that feels like we're playing cat and mouse. I go, she goes, she goes, I go. And it's almost like when you're mimicking somebody when you're a kid. It's all about eye contact. The partnership is like a conversation. I'm trying to pay as much attention to these small little movements that Indiana takes so I can react authentically. I think the nature of Robin's choreography enables the dancers to be a little bit more sensitive to each other and more observant. I love the moment where I gently offer her my hand. And then you take it away. <laughs> I think the giggle is representative of youth and fun and pleasure and being naive, and just having a good time, which is challenging for me. <laughs> when you get to see a couple who are really playing with each other, that's what makes it so special and fun to watch. At the end, a part that's always really exciting is when I do an arabesque and he taps me, which is pretty unusual, and then I shoot off into the wings. And it's, I think, one of the best ways to exit the stage because you're so tired by the end of it that you just get to fly in the wings. I feel the end of the ballet is one of the most spectacular pieces of dance ever choreographed. It's so simple and understated and quiet, and that's a rarity in an end of a ballet. We're supposed to be walking and remembering what has happened in the space. So I like to just stare at the wings and the floor and just kind of feel the years that I've been in this company. And I think that makes the ballet authentic and special to me because I'm inhabiting a space that I've danced so many other ballets on. The brown boy gently touches the center of the stage and it just seems like an acknowledgement that this is where we've been and this is where we've been dancing. It's a really special moment in the ballet when we get to bow to each other. We usually bow to the audience, but this time it feels like you're just saying thank you for joining me in this dance and this hour-long journey that we've gone through together, through all the range of emotions, through all the steps that you've been doing, the dramatic music, everything. You really feel that sense of community to have this opportunity to stop and be silent and still and feel energy beside you, different dancers, the crew backstage, the whole audience staring at you. It's a pretty spectacular moment. It's a pure moment. You can't find it in any other ballet. <laughs>